Hey everybody, and welcome to our iOS development course from the Electronic Armory. In our first video, we'll introduce you to programming with the Swift 4 programming language. We use Xcode 9, and we'll start from scratch and get more advanced. So, even if you don't have any experience, you should be able to follow along. If you're an advanced Swift programmer, you may still find something new in our tutorials. In future videos, we'll continue to get more and more advanced, so make sure that you watch all the videos as each one will build upon the previous video as we learned iOS development in Swift 4. So let's begin. Now, as I mentioned, we'll be using the Xcode version 9 in our tutorials from now on. And if you don't have 9 yet, as it hasn't been released, you should be okay for the most part. And probably by the time you're watching this, it will come out. So to download and install Xcode, you'll have to go to the App Store on your Mac and a Mac is required for iOS development. And so once you download Xcode through the App Store, you'll be able to install it and see the screen once you open it. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this getting started with a playground. Now playgrounds are a nice way that we can just test out code without having all the cumbersome overhead of having widgets and things like that. So go ahead and click on the playground. And if you don't see that menu and just Xcode opens up, you can also get it from file new and then playground. Okay, and so we're actually going to just start with a blank playground for iOS. I'm going to hit the next button. And this is going to go in. I'm just going to dump it into my uh, development folders. We have a couple other folders here from other videos that we've done. And I'm just going to do my first Swift app. Okay, nothing special. Just go ahead and create that in that directory. Or you can create a, another subdirectory in there. And I'm going to go ahead and expand this out a little bit. All right, so let's start from the top. Now, if you're not familiar with C-based programming languages, this is what we call a comment. Comments are not code, they don't get executed. What you can also do is use a, a comment, uh, which is the forward slash forward slash, and you can see that turns it into green. We can use that to turn off that line of code if we wanted to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. The next line of code is a import statement. And this import statement is importing the UI kit module. Now, there are a bunch of other modules that we can use, and we'll go into those in the future, but UIKit is what we're going to use for buttons and widgets and everything else. Well, this is just a playground, so we don't need any of those things uh, at this moment. So I'm actually going to change this to foundation by just typing it in over top of the UI uh, the UI kit. So you can see that there's a little context menu that pops down here, and this is our autocomplete. And the autocomplete is telling us that uh, we have a couple modules in our list that we can choose from, namely Foundation, a AV Foundation, uh, Audio Video Foundation, and then Core Foundation. So uh, we're interested in Foundation, but if you type in anything else or you backspace this to see more, um, you, you can discover other modules that you might want to include in your application. But again, for ours, we're just going to use Foundation. So hit Enter on that, and we're going to switch that over to, to Foundation. All right, now the last line of code that we have is creating a variable and storing a value inside of that variable. So the way that variables work is we usually have a var keyword in front of them, and then we define what that variable name is, and then we set that equal to a value. So we have the uh, variable on the left and then the value on the right. Pretty, pretty standard stuff, especially if you're already familiar with programming. Now, let me show you uh, the normal way that we program in Swift that you may not be familiar with. I'm actually going to delete this line, and I'm going to use the keyword let. And you can see as we type in here, our, uh, our context menu pops down. Our autocomplete suggests that we use that one. And if I hit enter on that, it'll autofill in that name and the value for that. Uh, don't worry about those errors that are popping up. That's just because I haven't completed the, the code yet. So as I'm typing, it's it's actually compiling and running my, my application. And so it's just telling me that you have errors because, well, it's not done yet. So we use the let keyword by default, not the var, as much as we can. That's going to allow us to have a little bit of optimization for our variables. Now, it's not a big deal for this application, but you want to get into a, a good habit of always using the let keyword um, and we'll explain that here in a second, but what I'm going to do is just cut, type in constant string and As you notice my cursor was already on that name when I hit enter 
And so in order to place my cursor over that value placeholder, which is that's why it's outlined in that gray, if you hold down the control key and then the forward slash, which is under the question mark key on most keyboards, it'll put my cursor over that value placeholder. And so as I type in here, I'm just gonna type in uh, double quotation marks to make a string. And you can see now that that's actually wrapped that value in double quotes, both on the front end and on the back of that. The next thing I wanna do is just type in constant string, you can type in whatever you want here. But this is the variable that we want to have. We just wanna have a string, which is a, kind of like a sentence, if you will, a con named constant string. You may have noticed that as I've been typing here, on the right-hand side, we have that value constant string as well. And if I hover over that value, we get an I, and this is the quick look for, um, for playgrounds. If I click on that, you can see the value of it. Well, that's not very helpful. I mean, it's just, it, it gets more helpful later on, but it's not helpful at the moment. And then the other one is the show result and that'll actually do it in line. So if I click on that, you can see that we get the value of that underneath here. And that's, um, that's again, not very helpful because we can see that this is um, a constant here. But let's say we wanted to reuse that constant string variable. And I wanna maybe, add to it. So I'm going to say constant string is actually going to equal itself, so constant string, plus, and then maybe something else because I want to actually concatenate or add another string to the end of this. So I'm going to say constant string is not mutable or changeable. And what it's going to try to do is it's going to try to add this string, which is this, using the plus operator, and then another string with a space in between because we want a space between this, the end of this string and the beginning of this string. But it was telling me is you cannot assign the value constant string is a let constant. Now that brings us back to the use of let versus var. And I can certainly change this to var. Um, I'm not gonna hit enter because uh, that would put in our place values uh, for that. Actually, let me show you what that looks like. Uh, it'll do that and overwrite what was there. So let me command Z to undo that. And uh, that, that'll that just keep it as a variable. And so var constant string. And now that'll allow me to do this string without any, the string concatenation without any errors. And you can see string, constant string is, and then there's some value over here. You can do a quick look, still not big enough. And then you can do the show result. And that'll kind of show you a little bit bigger um, again, in line, so you can see the, the current value of that. Okay, so what's new in Swift 4, for those uh, who have sucked through here that may be a little bit more experienced, is I wanna create a new string, but I wanna do it as a, um, actually I'm gonna start off with a let keyword. Uh, it's going to be a multi-line string, and so I'm just gonna type in multi-line string, and that's going to equal, and normally what you might think is, like this would be the first line, and then you hit enter and second line and then enter and then let's just say third line and we'll keep it like that. Well, Swift doesn't let you do that because it needs to have some kind of indication that this value continues on to a different line. Now, normally what you might do is do a backsla uh, backslash n, end it, um, and then you would probably just like do something like this and just concatenate those or or even worse is, let's see, let's put our cursor here and delete this. It's something like that and you just do it all in one line. Well, in Swift 4 they've introduced the multi-line uh, operator, uh, string operator, and that's going to be, instead of a double quote, single double quote, it's going to be a triple double quote. So let me type in, um, and actually I typed it in once and Xcode already picked that up. And so it, it put in three double quotes for me. And then I just have to end those three double quotes. However, when I end the three double quotes, I need to put those on a new line. That's very important. So I'll actually get rid of some of this extra formatting that I was using to demonstrate. Okay, so um, I'm gonna actually uh, put that on a new line as well. And everything should look good. And so what I can do is, again, I can hold press this little button here to uh, show us the value of that. So we have first line, and then it looks like I have an extra space here. And this is really 
useful. This is again why showing these values is useful because I forgot that we have a slash n at the end there. And so it's first line and then it's the new line and then it's another new line character that you don't see at the end of that. So let me just go ahead and delete that one, give it a second to auto compile. And now you can see that that's pretty much what I want. And so that's the new multi-line uh, operator in Swift 4. Okay, so something else I want to show you, and what I mentioned was we need to always use the let keyword. It's going to um, give some optimizations to your, your variable allocations and, and whatnot, and we'll go into that probably in future videos, but right now, just always use let. And if you need to switch it to a var, let me show you how we usually do that. So I'm going to say this string non-mutable or non-changeable is what that means, and I'm going to set that equal to... Um, I don't know, just say non-mutable. Okay, and then what I'm going to try to do is mutable, uh, mutate it or change it. And so I'm going to say uh, plus equals, and that's going to be the equivalent of basically this line up here. So plus equals means itself plus, and that's just a, a little shortcut that we use here. And so I'm going to do uh, double quotes, space, can't do it. Okay, so I'm going to save that, um, and it's going to let me know that that's an error. Left side of mutating operator isn't mutable. So you might see mutating, and if you've never seen that keyword before, that's why I'm explaining it here, because you'll see it in the error messages, and it's really important that you know that mutating or mutable means to change, or non-mutable means that you can't change it. Um, okay, so how what's the easiest way to change this back to a, a var so that we can change it? Well, sometimes your variables are way at the top and you have to scroll up or you have to find it. And so what I like to do sometimes is just click on this uh, stop sign with a circle in it. And once you do that, it'll actually ask you if you want to auto fix it. So change let to var to make it mutable. Yes, please. So click on the fix button in that little pop up that comes up and change it and give it a second. And it will change that let to a var recompile and everything is is all good. So if I click on this uh, show result again, I can see that indeed our string is now mutable. All right, so another thing I wanna talk about with variables is the fact that we've been just creating string variables, but what if you need to store a number? Well, you can, um, let's just do number value as a let variable, and or a let constant, I should say. And we're going to say, you know, maybe you might think of putting it in quotes or something like that. Um, and that's perfectly valid. It's just going to be a string. But if I ever try to add a, a number to that, I'll get an error. Uh, and so we actually just want to make it a number. Um, and again, this might be obvious to people who are a little bit more experienced. But uh, this is, works a little bit differently in Swift than, say, other languages like Java uh, or JavaScript even, where uh, you have different... Uh, either tightly or um, where you have just strongly typed languages. So I have a number here, value number, and what I can do is I can put in a number value and assign that, if I spell it correctly, another, let's say, let's make this a different number, except for the fact that I made that a let instead of a var, so just go ahead and fix that real quick, which is fine, I do that all the time. Um, and it's going to say, well, it cannot assign a value of type string to type int. Well, again, if you're familiar with JavaScript, you can do this all day long. But in Swift, what's happened is when I've declared this variable and set its value, Swift has interpreted that this is going to be an integer. If I put in a decimal point and did like 18.5, you'll see this error change slightly. And it'll say, cannot change or assign the value of a type string, which is down here in the bottom on line 19 to type double, and that's going to be a double precision uh, floating point value for this, which is basically just a decimal point uh, value here. So yeah, we can't actually do this, but what we can do is we can create another variable. Uh, and what is happening here is, again, Swift is figuring this out for us, but if we want to be explicit about it, let's say we don't want this to be a double precision, we're just happy with the regular precision of a float value, we can explicitly uh, typecast this to a float. And the way that we do this is we put our cursor at the end of the variable name, 
and put a uh, colon in there and then a capital F and a float value. You can see we have other float values in here, 32-bit, 64-bit, etc. Um, and then it changes to cannot assign value of type string to a type float. Okay, so now this value, uh, this number value is a type float, so we can never assign a string to it. So let's just put in 20 there and assign it. And that's perfectly fine, even though under normal circumstances, this would be an integer. Uh, the compiler figures out that what we can make, uh, what it's really doing is 20.0 there, but we don't need to put in that. If you're used to other C languages, sometimes you do like a, uh, yeah, wherever the de decimal point is and then f, f or float. Uh, we don't do that in Swift, so let's just remove all that fun stuff. Okay, so moving on, we're going to, um, now most of our values have been printed out to the, str uh, to the side here, but let's say we want to print it out to the console. We're running an iOS application and we just want to debug some, some values of our, of our variables. Uh, the easiest way to do that is just to do a print statement and it's, it's a function and so with functions, we include the parentheses. So begin parentheses, and then it's asking for, uh, we have a couple options here, one and two. Uh, the first one is it's going to give us a, um, it's gonna ask for a list of items to include there, or it's going to include a list of items and then a separator and then a terminator. We won't go into that right now, but this is a really kind of fancy way. We can do a lot of really powerful things with this, but all we really need to do is just do a print and then some print statement or value or whatever you want to put there and wait for this to uh, compile appropriately. And once that's done compiling and printing out, you can now see that we have the value of that string in this print statement. And so let's say I wanted to print out the value here. I can just replace that instead of a string, I can put in a variable and again, if you're not familiar with programming, this is a very powerful technique of not hard coding or putting string literals in uh, our values, but instead putting into a variable that we can actually compute. So if I take our number value variable and I stick in this print statement, you see that it prints out 20. But let's say I copy, I'm gonna highlight that line, press Command C, put it under this one, and line 19, you can see that at this on line 19, the value of number value is 18.5, as you would expect. And then from line 20, it changes. And the next time we print that out, uh, it's going to be 20.0. Okay, perfect. So the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna move on. So what I'm gonna do is put in a new print statement with a string and just put in a whole bunch of hyphens because this will kind of separate out our print statements from some of the stuff that we've done previously. So you can. I'm going to keep this code. I'm going to put it into a repository so you guys can just download this playground, play around with these different values and see how it works. Uh, I'm going to scroll down here and just start. I'm going to give us a little bit of space here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I want to show you kind of how to typecast. All right, so the next thing I want to do is actually scroll up here and take our constant string, which is actually not constant anymore. And I'm going to scroll back down. And what I'm going to do is assign it to a new variable. I'm just going to do a new string equals, and I want to take that string, which is value, if we just let that compile. And I'm going to put the result here because I want to show you what this value is. All right, so this is the value of this string. It says constant string is not mutable, but I'm going to add like a number at the end of that. And so if I wanted to add this number value here, a lot of times in other languages, you might type in plus and then the number value or you might get fancy and say plus and then a string like colon space uh, and double quotes and then plus and what that would hopefully do is say constant string is not mutable colon space and then the number 20 because that's the last assigned value but it's going to give us an error because um, and this is important to know what these errors mean and so it's very important that you experiment with swift and and once you get these errors, because I mean, if I just read binary operator plus cannot be applied to operands of type float and string, that might not be immediately obvious. But what this is saying is I cannot combine a string and a float value. But what I can do, uh, this is our float value, by the way, because it's uh, explicitly set to a float, is I can typecast this or recast it or convert it to a string by 
putting it into a string function, if you will. It's uh, basically a constructor for a string. And so the value that comes out of here, it'll take this float value, convert it to a string, and then append it right here. And this is the result that we were looking for. Constant string is not mutable, colon, which is comes from here, space, 20.0. All right, so that should get you out of a lot of uh, different um, binds that you might have trying to either combine an int or a float because you can't even do that. Swift is going to very strongly type those, uh, those variables and you can't do that, so you have to convert them over or just make them both the same type. Okay, and so if we print out the value of that new, uh, new string here, again, it's gonna maybe give you some errors as you start typing. Um, there we go, and so I'm gonna copy this line of code and just paste it under there as we, as we move along. So I think this is a good place to stop. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more videos in this series on Swift 4 and iOS development. In our next video, we'll talk about functions and classes, which you'll be using in all of your applications going forward. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.